Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. We are headlong into fall or autumn now and I have the set of Aviva Color Sheets, the fall packet, and I thought I could try those today with the Aviva Sketchbook. It's 100% cotton and it is handmade paper, so it's really kind of nice. It comes in two sizes. I have the A5. Um, I'm pretty sure the other size is an A6, but I'll check for sure. It's really nice. It has a pocket in the back and the paper is handmade. So you can see it has a lot of uh, flex and uh, it's a nice smooth texture to it. And it's not overly sized. So I really do like that. Um, it's just something fun and different. And it's, uh, it's good for this time of year for the colder months because uh, you've got a nice warm paper to paint on. So let's give this a shot with the Viviva Fall Color Sheets. Are you ready? Let's go paint some pumpkins. I am willing to bet that each and every one of you has this going on outside your grocery store right about now. So even though I am linking to the photo for you, um, I'm, you know, I'm just using it as a launching pad. You find whatever pumpkin you want and we can paint that. You can even paint one from life. Let's talk about these color sheets. Uh, they come in a set like this. It's a little folio and just like the others, there are 16 in the set. And you know what? These have some new colors in them. Now I've got a review that I've done on these and I will put a card up here in the right hand corner so that you can go watch that if you want to. And then at the end, I will link to my Viviva playlist. I am doing a collaboration with Viva at least through the end of 2023. And um, if you like this demonstration and decide that this is something that you want to go for, I do have a coupon for you and an affiliate link. So um, you can also get the sketchbook from Viviva. They have a couple different sketchbooks. Now this one is the size A5, 100% cotton, handmade paper sketchbook. And you'll see that I've got it taped off. That is washi tape. Uh, it is very, very low tack. However, because it's handmade paper, the paper did tear. So um, you'll either have to tap the tape on your clothing a lot before you put it down or um, you know draw a line and just be really careful but uh, be, be aware that when you're using handmade paper that is definitely a characteristic that uh, the paper might tear when you're picking it up and at the end I did use the heat tool as I always do and boy um, I almost burned my fingers <laughs> but I could not get it to come up uh, cleanly and evenly but you know for a sketchbook it doesn't bother me um, if it is something that you're going to uh, give to someone or use for uh, further art or to create something with that piece that you're working on in your sketchbook then you might want to just uh, be a little more careful with your washi tape. So what I'm doing is the way that these color sheets work I'm using my Princeton uh, number eight round by the way but these color sheets are really kind of cool. They're just very, very highly pigmented dye based watercolor. So they're made on these big sheets and they put the pigment down there with the dyes and then they let them dry and they cut those sheets up and then put them in the, in these little folios for you. They're so portable. They're smaller than a cell phone, about as thick as, oh, I don't know. That's about a quarter of an inch thick, maybe three eighths of an inch thick. And um, like I said, this is their fall set. I just really, really like them. And I, at first I thought, I don't know, dye-based watercolors, am I ever gonna use these? And you know what? They're so bright and so vibrant and they're just fun. That's just it, they're just fun. So if you wanna get something that's just fun to play with, these really are quite a bit of fun. I'm gonna start out with the dusk orange and you can see I'm just painting it in. I'm not, I didn't even have a drawing there. I just kind of am uh, using that Unsplash photo as kind of a springboard of an idea. And then I'm just going to um, just play around and see what I can come up with. They re-wet very easily. You don't have to spray them or anything. In fact, if you sprayed them, then they'd be fully activated and ready to go. Right now I'm using the dusk orange and that autumn leaf. The autumn leaf is kind of like a, a, a light burnt sienna type shade or a rust. Uh, if you wanted to paint something with rust on it, that's an excellent, uh, excellent tone for that. And then let's see here. Let me go down to... Uh, one of these pages that has some green on it. I like the light green and the bottle green, but that lower one there is the bottle green. Look how rich this is. It really does look like that dark green bottle glass. It really is just the most beautiful green. I love it so much. 
and you can do all the techniques that you can do with regular watercolor with these dyes. You can um, you can use salt, you can use rice, you can use the saran wrap technique. You can use all of those techniques on these, get some really cool effects of texture going. Uh, you can drop in water, you can get back runs, you can get cauliflower blooms, anything you want to play with, you can. And right now on this pumpkin, I've used a lot of wet on wet. I just want to keep this super loose and super sketchy. Uh, the one thing that I will suggest that you do on these is that you swatch them out ahead of time. They do not look necessarily like what you see in the folio. So for instance, that crimson there, that's a pretty close match. It looks a little more burgundy on the, on the paper. Uh, but sometimes even the names of the color is just sometimes not what you'd expect. Like for instance, this fire, it, it has a metallic look to it and it looks almost like it would be a gold. Well, it's, it's more toward an orange and then this happy yellow, if you mix it the right way, um, it can really be a good yellow. And I wanted to bring in some of those, uh, some of the oranges with it, but otherwise it can, it almost looks like a neon, like a highlighter yellow. Um, and it is a happy color. Now this palette that I'm using in the back, they've changed the packaging somehow because the older folios, this used to be plastic coated, plastic coated. <laughs> A little bit more and it was easier to clean um, this one is not you you can't wipe it off so I don't know what happened with um, with the process here but I, I'm not a huge fan of using the folio as a mixing place so you might want to have an extra space to mix but on all the other folios it's uh, coated with plastic and you can definitely well, I'm saying plastic I don't know if it is plastic but it's it wipes right off um, the little vellum sheets that are in between, and again, I'm saying vellum, I don't know what it's made out of, but they're, they don't stick. It's, it's like a, a very textured paper, almost like, uh, almost like that handmade, uh, rice paper, although it doesn't dissolve on you. I don't know. I can't really explain it. It's just, uh, it looks like vellum and it has a, a crinkly texture to it. But because of that, you really don't have to wait. Like if you're painting and you're doing some urban sketching and you look at your watch and you realize, oh my gosh, I've got to get back to work. I better pack it away and go. You can just close this up and your paints won't stick together. Now, if you're really wise, you will remember to open it up and let it dry, but um, it's not 100% necessary. I have let mine stay closed and let them dry and nothing has gone awry. Everything has gone very, very well with these and I haven't had any trouble at all. I'm pretty excited about the last four in this palette because they're pastels. Um, it all depends on how you define pastel though, because uh, to look at them, they're very, very bright, very vibrant. And even when I swatched them out in that other video there, they are pretty, pretty bright and vibrant. But as a palette goes, really neat colors. And I'm going to go in here in the end and use some of the ink blue too, which is just such a cool color. I love it. I, I just, it's kind of a purpley blue. Um, right now I'm just kind of trying to create an out of focus background that would be pumpkins and leaves. And you know, this is one of those times when I'm painting and I didn't really have a plan. Um, I just wanted to have two pumpkins of different values in the front and then just kind of tap stuff in, in the background and do a lot of wet and wet and let things just kind of mix and, and merge together. And boy, was it fun. I really enjoyed doing this. You know, a lot of times when you paint something for fall, the colors are muted. The, um, you know, the whole piece is just kind of toned down a little bit, but this one is bright and sunny and vibrant. And, you know, honestly, it's almost like the kind of fall we're having right now in Colorado. The skies seem to be their brightest blue. The sun is so bright and clear, and it's just a beautiful crisp day, just about every day that we go outside. Um, so yeah, this is just really very reminiscent of what I'm experiencing in real life right now. Kind of maybe turned up the chroma just a little bit, but that makes it so much fun. And that green that I put in up there, that's the light green. I really like that color. Um, now though, I'm going to go in with some of this ink blue. It's really kind of a cool color. It's very, very dark as you can see. And it's not like an India ink. It's more like a fountain pen ink or a ballpoint pen ink. It's that really dark kind of bluish purple. And I'm just going to separate that pumpkin from the background just a little bit and maybe add some deeper shadows in the ridges on this one here so that it can just uh, set in there just a little bit more comfortably. And there you have it. I mean, you can do all kinds of layering, all kinds of playing with this. I really just kept painting because it would just 
continued to be fun. And in fact, I didn't have a plan for this at all. And it turned out to be a really kind of a good test. So I'm putting in the, um, the ink here, that, that ink blue all around, just kind of trying to fill in spots on the background, just kind of playing around, see what I want to do with it. And then I realized, oh, this would be look really, really good if I added some leaves. So I dried the painting off thoroughly and look at that. There's not much of a color shift. I mean, that's one of the really fun things about these is that, you know, when you use watercolor and then it has that color shift, sometimes it's just so bright and vibrant when you're painting with it. And then you look at it when it's dry and you think, oh, I got to go over it again because it's not quite what I wanted. Well, these have a very, very slight color shift. So it's uh, uh, really maintains that intensity. I'm going in with a liner brush now. I've, it's a silver black velvet number one and I'm just kind of filling in a little bit of more defined ridges and I'm still using that ink, that, that blue. Now I could have gone in and uh, used a different color, but I really wanted to just stick with that blue because I've got it in the background and I've got it on top of the pumpkins. And when it's so concentrated and so dark, it's kind of like using indigo. You know, it can pass for a, a darker, heavier color. But now I'm using this liner brush. This is so fun for me. If I could just sit and paint squiggly lines all day, <laughs> <laughs> I would be so relaxed and just have my, my Zen moment all day long. Um, so this, this brush is really good for this because it's just so easy to do. Uh, I do have to kind of reload every now and then, but just kind of trying to decide what I want to do here. And I've got the vines and then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to put a leaf right out this way. And then I really forgot what a pumpkin leaf looked like. So without really thinking about it, I just did a leaf shape and then I thought, you know what, that's a philodendron, that's not a pumpkin. So I kind of looked online just to see what pumpkin leaves look like. And they really have kind of more of a, a fat heart shape. So I just kind of filled in what I could here. But what I wanted to show you on this particular section of the video is that I'm going over the colors underneath. And even though it's sheer and uh, transparent, if you get the color thick enough, it's really not so thin that it's a, a distraction in its transparency. Does that make sense? You know, if I were to do this in watercolor, that wouldn't work. I would have had to have the leaves drawn first and then to go over. So now I'm feeling bold and I thought, well, let me just try and go over these pumpkins in this uh, green. And I'm using mainly the bottle green here. And let's see how dark I can get this because if I can hide that background pretty well, let's see if I can hide two pumpkins. And at first you can see it, it goes down really sheer uh, but I go ahead and I fill it in between mixes of that bottle green and the uh, light green and it came up okay. So I was having no trouble at all just going right over something I had already done and I've never done that with these color sheets before. I've always used them exactly as you would with watercolor and to leave space for these leaves, you know, to go in with something with an entire plan. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> But for this, I was just having fun and just kind of letting the color take me where it wanted to go. And I was so thrilled that this worked out. And I promise you, I did move my heat tool around. I didn't just hold it in one spot. But uh, after I got that all dry, made sure all the paint was thoroughly dry, I went in with some colored pencils. And I wanted to try this because I've never used colored pencils on this uh, sketchbook before. And I wanted to see how they go and they went exactly as expected. There's uh, enough texture there that you can see uh, what's going on with the paper. And um, it's like, a, it's a cold press, but I would call it a fine grain cold press. It's really not, it's not super textured. Um, it's certainly not hot press though. It's not smooth, but it's definitely not as textured as arches. So if that uh, gives you some kind of a barometer, um, you know, I hope that that is helpful to you. So just kind of going in and just suggesting little uh, little veins in the leaf here with a lighter green and just going around the edges. Pumpkin leaves aren't variegated, but I was having fun. I was having fun. I was enjoying doing this and I didn't want to stop. And you know what, guys? Art is supposed to be fun. And if you want something just to relax, just to have fun and to not worry about anything at all, this combination of the sketchbook and these color sheets is really pretty good. Um, I remember I remember that the sketchbook is uh, just $20 on their website. And because this paper is so great, you can use front and back no problem. So you can get 40 paintings in here. There's 20 sheets for $20. It's hard bound. It has that pocket in the back. Handmade paper. It's made from recycled cotton, 100% cotton rag from the, the garment industry typically is where that comes from and uh, A5 size, really like it. And then the paints, the folio of paints is 22. So just for 
and then you've got my coupon on top of that too. Um, you can really have yourself some fun this fall. I mean, can you imagine sitting in a cafe with this, enjoying your little pumpkin spice latte and painting pumpkins? It's, it's just a really fun and relaxing way to spend your free time. And you got to carve out those free moments for yourself wherever you can, you know? I mean, it's we all have things to do. We're all busy. We all have to get home and cook dinner or pick up the kids or get that report done for our boss. And it's just a lot and sometimes just dissolving in front of the TV is about all you can handle but during the day if you have some time and really want to just relax and just have a moment for yourself painting is just such a great release and of course you know I'm always going to recommend that here's what I don't recommend <laughs> I don't recommend putting washi tape on this. Um, they do have another sketchbook that they sell and it's called their ivory paper. I believe that one is not 100% cotton. Um, they are both, all these papers are uh, acid free and I have a belief, I have a feeling that, yeah, that paper is uh, 240 GSM and it's also 64 pages. That one costs a little bit less. It is for the A5, that one's only 16. So you could try that one too. Both of these lie fully flat when they when they lay down. And um, yeah, I just, I, it's funny because I, to be honest with you, I wasn't too sure when Viviva reached out to me initially, I wasn't too sure how happy I was gonna be with the collaboration. But I, every time I use something from them, I have been more and more impressed. Uh, this was a hard, cold reminder to me that, uh, oh yeah, handmade paper and uh, washi tape don't always agree. So I tried a fix at the end though. I had seen somewhere on some social media platform that if you get the paper wet just with the clean water, just tap some water on there and then run the back of a spoon over it, that you can get that paper to kind of fix itself. Well, I think that that is, you know, a, a, a fool's a fool's errand because <laughs> I tried and maybe I didn't do it right or maybe the paper was too torn. Um, I did get a couple drops of water on there and of course I didn't have a spoon. I had a palette knife, but what it did was it left, um, it left metal marks on the paper. So don't recommend that one. But if you know a way to fix damaged paper, leave a note in the comments. You guys, thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate everything that you do. I am so happy that you're here with me on Art on the Creek. Um, you know, instead of a Patreon, if you wanna do more things like this full length, I am opening up memberships on my channel. And there's a link in the description about those as well. And uh, you can learn and find out which, if any of those memberships is right for you. I'm kind of trying to do everything here on YouTube instead of opening a new platform on uh, Patreon. But if you'd prefer being on Patreon, let me know in the comments because I want to make this easy for you. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make this channel everything that you guys want it to be because that's, you guys are the backbone of this and that's really what it's all about. So I do appreciate your feedback. I so appreciate it when you comment and share my channel and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much. And I hope you have fun this week. I hope that you're out there enjoying all the fall things. Go pick those apples. Go get some cider. Go get, take your kids and get their faces painted. Go to the fair and pick a great pumpkin for yourself. We'll see you later, guys. Bye now.